Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at how the RX570 4GB version copes with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at the performance of the RX570 4GB version in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now this has actually been a relatively well requested video, so I figured I'd do it, go through some of the settings, go through what the defaults like, and see if there's any tweaks we can make to make the gameplay a little bit better. So let's get straight into it and go over to the computer. So starting off with our PC setup. So this is the latest installation of FS 2020 as of the 12th of October, 2020. And the system that we're using is a Ryzen 5 2600, so that's six cores, 12 threads. We're also using 16 gigs of RAM, which is running at DDR3200. Other things, we've got an NVMe one terabyte storage drive, so loading time should be a little bit better. But essentially what we're concentrating on here is the graphics card itself. Now this particular one is a Gigabyte RX 570, four gigabytes. And I figured I'd see how it goes. Now, as you can see in the top left of your screen, we've currently got Afterburner running, so we've got some stats there, so we can see how it's going. Currently, just actually on the screen, we've got a game ready started, but we're not quite into it. And already you can see GPU is at 72 degrees in our relatively well-cooled Corsair case. The GPU is at 100%, pretty much slammed all the time. And the frequency at the moment is 1150, 1152, that kind of thing. There is no factory overclock on this card at all. It is literally all stock settings. Same goes for the CPU and also the RAM. The XMP has been enabled, but this is basically flatline settings to see what is likely to happen. And graphics card wise, as you can see at the moment, we are running 1080p and it is windowed currently. And it's currently set to the default settings. So if we click on reset to defaults and continue. So this is what Microsoft actually think that the game will run like and is the kind of optimum settings. And I think this is probably a little bit on the optimistic side being uh, global rendering quality of medium. VSync is on, obviously we want to have VSync on because we don't want it going crazy, although it's unlikely to get over 60 frames per second anyway. Uh, we've got 100% render scaling, anti-aliasing is TAA, and pretty much everything else is set to medium. We've got two, four times anti-stropic filtering, and texture super sampling is at 2x2, two two. and yeah, basically you can go through and see the rest of the settings. But essentially it is set to medium or the kind of defaults that it wants to do for this particular card. So the best thing to do is if we get straight into the game, and we are currently flying from Bristol Filton and we'll go to, over to Bristol International. Just a quick flight around and see what the actual performance is like. As you can see there, we're DirectX 11 and currently it's saying we're getting about 30 frames per second, which should be pretty playable, although at the moment we are a static ground, we're not moving, so this obviously will drop considerably. So let's fire back into the game and uh, do some flying. Okay, so we're on the runway, so let's throttle up. Probably best if we turn around. Yeah, this is not going well already. This is not an example of how to fly an airplane, this is more of an example of what the graphics card performs like. Now we can retract the landing gear. Remove the flaps. And as you can see, we're just hovering over the Filton area of Bristol. And we're still in and around the 30 frames per second, which actually isn't too bad. The GPU is currently pretty much slammed. And let's slow things down a bit so we don't overspeed. There we are already. So as you can see, 73 degrees on the GPU, 100% usage. And the frequency is uh, here, there, and everywhere. So you can overclock these cards quite a little bit to get better performance, but again, 30 frames per second on this actually isn't too bad at all. So let's find our airport. We better slow down a bit. And before we fall out of the sky. As you see, a game actually looks quite nice. There doesn't seem to be any massively jaggy edges. And we do seem to be sticking around that 30 frames per second, which is where we want to be. There's a few little dips down into the 20s. Uh, we're overspeeding something chronic. Uh, way 
way too fast. There we go. So actually what I'll do is if I, uh, if I come down a little bit more so we get into some of the more graphically detailed areas. You see we're still around about the 20 frames per second mark, which actually for this is absolutely fine. It isn't a game as such, it is a simulator. So it's, it's not too bad at all. And actually it does look quite nice, we've got some nice shadows. This is real time at the moment, using the AI for the, uh, the weather system and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's not looking too bad at all. Again, we're around about the 24, 25 frames per second. And this is, in my opinion, absolutely playable. In fact, well, it is, because you can see me playing it. And actually, I think some of the shadows down there in the streets, as you can see, the sun is kind of coming down. It's starting to set. It is kind of getting into winter here, and you can see the detail down there on the, I believe that's the M32 motorway going through Bristol. But yeah, it looks, uh, looks pretty decent. And again, the GPU is completely slammed, so uh, let's not be in, in any mistake. It's not handling it easily. But it's getting the job done. And again, 30 frames per second, I think, is absolutely fine for this kind of title. Again, at this kind of altitude with all the graphical settings, everything loading up, it's not too bad at all. And let's see if we can actually land this thing. And full flaps. Try, try not to crash. We're a little bit too fast, so let's burn off some of that speed. And there we go. We've touched down. Safe and sound. And we'll get to a complete stop at Filton. And then let's see if we can crank this up to get somewhere closer to 60 frames per second. So we'll put the brakes on. And let's now go into the settings. So let's go into general and in the graphics settings. So we'll leave it at 1080p. I think going lower than 1080p is a bad idea. And let's turn down, or well, V-Sync wrong, frame rate limit, we'll leave that. Render scaling, I'll leave that as it is. Let's turn off anti-aliasing, because I don't think anti-aliasing is actually that important. Um, and what else can we reduce? Let's take off the anti-stropic filtering and the texture super sampling. Uh, I think that is probably gonna be about all we need to do. I might take bloom off. Actually, no, we'll leave those on because it's actually nice to see some of those things. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So let's apply and save just with those few little tweaks and see what the frame rate is like actually in flight now. So back onto the runway, let's throttle up. Actually, I think we're a little bit too close to the end there, but still. So we'll take off the brakes. Use a little bit of rudder to keep us straight. Wait till we get to just over the uh, 100 knots mark. And for some reason, I'm not sure why, it wants to go back to that view. Which is not very helpful. But again, you get the general idea. So we're still running about the 30 frames per second mark, which isn't actually too bad. really doesn't look a great deal different actually but we're still staying a little bit higher a few more frames per second especially in these lower terrain areas and you can see you've got the sun glistening off the wings there that looks really really nice and it is totally playable let's go down the, uh, the m32 a little bit reduce some of our airspeed and this is in a, uh, a pretty densely wooded area as you can see there's plenty of trees so there's lots of things for the gpu to do in but we're still sticking above those 30 frames per second. 30, I think, is really where you should be aiming for if you can with this particular title. And yeah, I think it looks really good. So let's, uh, let's throttle right away up. We'll get rid of the flaps and we'll go up to a, a slightly higher elevation and see what things look like. Maybe we'll take a look at the, the bridge goes between England and Wales, which is around behind us somewhere I believe, too much 
change our speed. We're getting 35 frames per second and we're currently around about 1500 feet altitude, which is uh, pretty good. We've got a bit of an overspeed situation, so. Skystalker, if you're watching this, I do apologize. And that was a massive, massive lock up there. So we, uh, for some reason then, we did lost pretty much everything. It just stuck solid. But again, now we're still running about the upper 30 frames per second, which is uh, pretty decent. And just down there, you can see the bridge. I think that is the, uh, I'm trying to think what the thing, that's the Prince, Prince of Wales Bridge. Calf just <laughs> reminded me there. So we've got the, uh, the Prince of Wales Bridge. They're going from England on your right hand side, going over to Wales over there on the right hand side. Uh, let's, uh, let's follow that along. So again, the textures and everything look okay. I do notice the um, occasional stutter on the frame rate, but certainly I don't think it's enough to cause you any real issues. And again, we're flying over the water. Look at the reflections on the wingtips and the uh, on the Bristol Channel there. Looking very, very nicely. And what I do love about this game is actually how detailed it is. There is an incredible amount of detail on this game. Although they've got the bridge a little bit wrong because it's actually a three lane motorway on both sides, if not four. But still, it does look pretty good. So here we are, we're actually on the Welsh side now of the bridge. But again, yeah, we're still around about the uh, 35, yeah, 34, 35 frames per second. Which is absolutely fine for this kind of title. So, to answer a a basic question, can the RX 570 play or use Microsoft Flight Sim 2020? Uh, definitely, yes. The answer is very conclusive. It's a very very playable experience. I'm not a particularly good pilot, but even so, it is very very playable. There's no huge frame dips. Uh, the CPU itself isn't really breaking a sweat. As you can see, the CPU is running about 40%. So the, the CPU is doing really well, absolutely fine. So GPU wise, we're pretty much always slammed at 100%, which is to be expected. There is an awful lot going on here. So let's see what we can do now. We'll pause this briefly and let's go into the options now and see if we can get up to 60 frames per second or at least 50. I'm actually recording this at 50 frames per second on my uh, OBS. So it'd be nice if we can get to that. So let's maybe set it to the their lowest setting, so low end setting. So let's go straight into that, we'll apply and save. This is still gonna be at 1080p. Um, let's see what we get now. So you can see the frame rate there has jumped up immediately. Yeah, there's a brief dip there where it drops down, but actually it still looks very good. You haven't got quite the same level of detail. Uh, let's see if we can get the sun to reflect on the wings at all. I don't think it will, because I think balloon will probably be disabled. Again, we've got our 50 frames per second. But you can see, obviously, it doesn't look quite as nice. Well, you're saying that, we've got some nice reflections. Oh, actually, yeah, we have got some, uh, some nice bloom effects on the wing there, as you can see. Again, this is real-time weather, so that does uh, put a little bit of strain on the GPU, depending on what is actually going on for the weather situation where you are. But I think, yeah, in my opinion, the game itself... At the moment, we're using about 9 gigs of RAM in total, including other things that I've got running, like MSI Afterburner and any other background tasks. So really, you are going to need 16 gigs of RAM. 12 gigs of RAM will probably do it, but 16 gigs would be what I would recommend in dual channel. Again, we're over the, uh, over the channel here, the British channel, or Bristol channel, whichever you want to call it. See some weird dips then in the GPU. So the GPU now actually... On the lowest settings, we are seeing it drop down. There's 84%, 90%. So potentially we could uh, increase it. So the lowest settings uh, can be handled relatively easily. 50 frames per second, which is, uh, it does actually feel actually quite buttery smooth. Again, it doesn't look as nice. You can see from the terrain, but all the terrain is there. Most of the uh, normal locations are easily identifiable. When you're uh, panning round like this, I'm not too sure what it's going to come out like actually on the video. Actually, there's some lens flare there, so we've still got some lens flare and stuff like that. And I think I'm about to crash. 
Top tip guys, if you're flying, keep an eye on your altitude, it is very handy. And let's see if we can land this from 200 knots. That's probably not a great idea. Full flaps. And let's try and burn off some of that speed. Ah, oh dear. Right, stop. Hit the brakes. There we go. We've stopped. Okay, so there we go. Easy thing to wrap up here. The uh, the outcome, I think. Let's just press that down to cut the background noise. I think, essentially, that shows that the RX 570 4 gig actually can run this game relatively easily. Okay, so there we go. There was a bit of fun. Uh, obviously, this isn't a particularly scientific test. All I've got is the afterburner running and the Reva tuner picking up all the stats there. Obviously, the minimum frame times, maximum frame times, all that kind of stuff, you can look into in more detail yourself. But essentially, I think what comes out of this is the fact that the RX 570, although a slightly aging card and lacking in RAM, only four gigs on this particular version, it still does play Flight Sim 2020 with actually quite a bit of ease. And obviously, if you do want a little bit more detail, you want to up the frame rate, etc etc there's a lot of flexibility actually in the menus to change settings to suit it for you if you're uh, wanting a larger resolution 1440p or even higher then maybe you might need to switch up your graphics card but i think for most people 1080p on an rx 570 this is totally fine so let me know what you think in the comment section below but in the meantime i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video thanks for watching